Hello and welcome back to Only Pay. We'll be discussing about what is inflation. Be sure to watch all the way to the end. If you are new to the channel, then hit the subscribe button below from our life-changing content. One of the oldest thing about economic life is that the price are uh, things keep rising. Incomes and prices in the past were amazingly different from what they are today in pride of trade judges. Mr. Dorsey, supposed to have one of the richest people in Britain, it's 1813 and his income is 10000 pounds a year today that's less than half of what primary school teachers straight out of college would earn in sense of sensibility there is an argument about whether an income of 20 pounds a week is enough to make you well off and the answer is yes it's there in living memory a cinema ticket was 10 pounds in 1970 today it's 30 pounds So what does inflation happen and should we worry about it government track inflation obviously and try to keep it low there is a vast amount of data collected all the time to ensure that government can say with amazing precision how the inflation rate is going on is it track for 2.3% per annum or might the increase of low 0.38% in february be be cause for alarm This is big historical term a relative new concern in the 17th century the spanish empire essentially collapsed from inflation without even realizing it was occurring so all the societies have become obsessed with measuring inflation and very focused on managing it so why is there inflation what makes it happen there is there are basically three reasons the first is what economists call cost push inflations This is where the cost to business arise and are then passed to customers. There can be lot of reasons for the rises. Firstly, raw materials, especially oil, might get in more expensive for very nice reason because of lot of countries are developing and doing well. Secondly, workers might be asking for more money and succeeding there because they are organized themselves well politically or big. because school and colleges haven't been trained enough workers in the skills that companies need thirdly land rents might increasing because not enough factories and offices have built which tend to come down to political failures around buildings permits the results of all this that business then push their extra on their consumer by rising prices they don't want to it's a scary move but they have no choice they would go out for business otherwise the second kind of inflation is called demand inflation this is where there are increase in the number of people who want something whose supply can't keep up the most common cause of demand inflation is an otherwise rather than nice thing that people are getting richer and have more money to spend that's why government can cause inflations by lowering taxes in everyone loves tax breaks because they raise disposable income but in the long term rising demand can also cause price rises thereby negating some of the initial boost of the tax break similarly a fall in interest rates may cause short term pleasures and long term inflationary pressures if interest rates on loan or mortgages fall we might be tempted to take out loan to buy a new car we always wanted to but the car company sensing solid demand will soon enough jack up the price if the banks and governments inject more cash and credit into the economy people have more money to spend but if they are all chasing the same number of goods as before it just means they can all offer more for the same this is what happened around housing in the uk particularly in london they were boldly the same number of houses they were 25 years ago but all cost an absurd amount more The third classic uh, cause of inflation is government printing money. There is a deep logic behind this idea which can at first sounds almost criminal. Government often want to stimulate the economy to create more jobs. So they print more money. This can be done literally by increasing the number of notes in circulation. Or oh, they can do it by increasing the government debt or by letting bank big bigger loans on the same necessity security in all these cases the amount of money in circulation increases but 
there is a big problem because after a long while it means the worth of every note starts to fall because more notes are chasing the same number of things to buy there's more money about it doesn't buy you more it just pushes up prices however there's a possibility here spotted by the economists and philosophers john maren keynes it takes time for the value of money to fall so for a little while there can be more cash around the prices haven't yet risen this is a window of opportunity that economies can with a lot of luck cases at such goldilocks moments people can actually increase their consumption firms can afford to hire more workers and buy new machineries and once they've done the production will increase there will be more stuff to buy before inflation is eaten up the gain so there is a real expansion a bit of inflation can grow the economy that's a big contested idea the argument is that it doesn't matter if prices are going up 10% every year if wages are going up 15% so deliberately government led inflation can be mechanism for growing the economy but it's a very risky move which is often backfired and been attacked by the great economies enemies of the keynes and economist people we now know as the monetarist who believe that anything which increases inflation is always going to be an issue and must be avoided at all cost so why is inflation such a problem the real problem is that not everything inflates at exactly the same rate if everything went up by 100% a year and so did everyone's income and it was all totally steady and predictable it would be weird but it wouldn't actually be do anything harm the harm comes from the fact that not everything changes at the same rate in 1941 in hungary inflation reached 150000% each day a jelly bean costed 10 pounds on monday morning would therefore cost equivalent of 150 pounds on tuesday morning and 225000 pounds on wednesday morning that's incredibly complicated but it's a problem only because other things would not be increasing as fast If you kept your life saving under a mattress you would be wiped out in a day or two the money that could have bought you house on monday would get a jelly bean on wednesday the, this is an ultra extreme case but it illustrates a basic point Infl- inflation is bad for savings there is no point putting money aside and that's a pity because saving money the attitude of saving up for things before you buy them is an admirable characteristics keep inflation low reward prudence it helps long term planning because you can know what your money will be worth in the future this rewards taking care around lot of cost ultimately what inflation reflects is the instability of the world and itself life self prices rise rise because we can't yet keep the complex system known as economy under control there's always something going wrong or growing or falling or failing somewhere ideally would keep inflation under control with a more and less fixed amount of money chasing a more or less stable amount of goods but in reality low inflation is extremely difficult to achieve because so many factors can detail it cost of material cost of labor productivity taxes falling or rising exchange rates again falling or rising a growing domestic economy and neighbor economy that's growing falling interest rates the buy of buying of government bonds or the printing of money in the end we may have to accept that inflation is a bit like the weather or our own moods something that's inherently rather unstable something uh, holds up and down we must endure even as we try to mitigate the extreme learning to live with inflation belongs to wisdom well if you enjoy this video don't forget to hit and like subscribe and be sure to turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any videos just like this one Please give us your thoughts in the comments below and we'll see you in the next part. Thanks for watching.